Hallelujah. All right, so we're coming out of St. John 1 through chapter 1, verse 1 through 18. All right, so let's start over. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believed on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He, hath, he that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received in the grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by who? Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're talking about Jesus Christ here. We're talking about Jesus was the word that was made flesh that dwelt among us. He was in the beginning before the world was even created, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go through this word and we're going to consider too that even in the last days, John the Baptist preached Jesus Christ before his ministry began on earth. John the Baptist was the one who prepared the way for the Son of God. He prepared the hearts of the people and prophesied, basically, that it's one greater than I who's coming the shoes you can't even tie up. So John the Baptist prepared the way of Jesus Christ. The end time preachers are preparing the way for Jesus' return. Do y'all believe that? End time preachers are. When we share this gospel of Jesus Christ, it is to let people know he's going to come back for a church without spot, without a wrinkle, or any such thing. So here it is in St. John. He said in the beginning was the word. How was the world framed? It was framed by when God did what? Spoke. When God spoke. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with who? God. That means Jesus himself was there in the beginning because Jesus is the word. He's the word, y'all. He's the living, breathing epistle of Bible. The word manifested on this earth. He was with God, and the word was what? He was God. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you can't split the three up. There are three entities in one. They come together and agree in one. Verse 2 said, the same was in beginning with what? It said it again. With God, Jesus Christ himself. I don't care who you are, what religion you are. If you don't acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he's the Son of God, you don't have any part with God. Verse 3 said, all things, listen to this, all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. So Jesus was in the beginning partaking in creation, y'all. Here it is in the word. He partook.
took in creation. Without him, nothing that was made was made, the Bible is saying. Verse 4 said, in him was what? Life. What did the beginning in Genesis says? When God created man, he did what? The only way man became alive is what God had to do. He breathed. In the Bible said man became a living soul. There is no life without God himself, Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, those that Trinity. There is no life abiding in you without that. Amen. You're all considered dead. <laughs> Look at this. In him was life, verse 4 said, and the life was the light of men. You, mankind would not even exist without God, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Because when he said it in the beginning, he said what? Let us. Who is us? Father, Son, Holy Ghost. In the beginning was the word. Jesus is the word. Yes. He was there from the beginning. Yes. We can't discount him. Just because he came on this earth to be born and walked in flesh does not mean that he's not the son of God. Yes. You can deny him all you want, but you're still denying God the Father at the same time. You're denying the Holy Ghost. If you deny Jesus, you deny all three, basically. Yes. You can't separate them. Verse 5 said, he's the only way, ain't he? The light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. We're talking about the spiritual part of man. This world, this earth, how things are. When Jesus Christ came as the light of the world, the darkness around it didn't understand them, did they? You had these carnal-minded people who did not understand what the purpose and what the life of Jesus Christ was about. Verse 6 says, here it is. There was a man, here's how Jesus got introduced, sent from God, his own cousin, John the Baptist, whose name was John. The same came for a what? A witness, just like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. To bear witness of the what? Light. light. Jesus was that light. That all men through him might what? Believe. Believe. There is no other way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man shall come unto the Father but by me. These scriptures wrapped together. He is the word. Living, breathing word. You cannot get through the door. Unless you come through the Son of God. Look at this. Verse 8 said, He was not that light. So we're talking about John. But was sent to bear witness of that light. John the Baptist had a job. To make straight the way of the Lord. To tell people there's one greater than I who's coming. John the Baptist had his own ministry. Preaching about Jesus. He baptized with water. But he also told the people, there's one greater than I who's coming who's going to baptize you with fire yes. in the Holy Ghost. Yes. I can't do that. I can't do that. Because Jesus was full. He was a child of the Holy Ghost. He was full of the Holy Ghost, y'all. Yes. Yeah, there, was, there was no part of him that had a fleshly father. His father was in heaven. Well, see, we're teaching on this because people don't understand it. People don't understand the dynamics of who Jesus is, the relationship that he has with the Father. I understand that people have read that Jesus has said, I, the Father is greater than I. But if he was there from the beginning, spiritually, that lets you know what level of power he has. Yeah. He has a level of power. With the Father and with the Holy Ghost. Look, verse 9 said, That was the true light which light of every man that come into the world. You know basically what they're saying. Without God and giving you breath and breathing, you wouldn't even exist. He's the light that allows man to live and to breathe and to walk this earth and to move through this earth. 
is only through Jesus Christ. If he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, life abides in Jesus Christ. You wouldn't be alive without their, the spirit of God. You would not be alive. Steve always said it. Dear cell battery ain't wake us up this morning. Yes. How do you control your heartbeat? Your heart beat thousands of times throughout the day. How do you control your inhaling and exhaling? Your lungs have an exchange of gas. You're not in control of certain things. The doctors still don't know what's going on in vitro when a baby is being birthed or, or formed in the womb. There's a whole lot of mystery that the doctors don't even know. They don't know how the heart is developed. They don't know how the lungs are developed. All they know is that they can see these stages and phases of childbirth. But it still remains a mystery because God is the molder and the shaper in the womb. He created man, even in childbirth. And people can't see that God is working his magic. <laughs> themselves multiplying and duplicating and then it, it was a, a, a moral law. It becomes a, 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 a I can't even, I'm losing my train of thought. But the stages of childbirth they call it a blaster site then it started multiplying. It, it got phases and names that these doctors are giving but they don't even understand what's going on. How the eyes are forming. The baby looked like a frog, a tadpole in the belly. Then all of a sudden, he's growing a spine. His heart is beating before his body is even formed. The mystery that God is doing work in that womb. Ain't nobody, listen, God's hand is in the midst of childbirth, y'all. Don't y'all think it's not? Yeah. He's doing the molding and the shaping. God is. No man is doing that. Things work by the hand of God. Life exists in Jesus Christ. Verse 10 said, he was in the world. Who are we talking about? Jesus. He was in the world and the world was made by him. Do y'all hear this? Who was the world made by? Jesus. Jesus. And the world didn't know him. The Bible saying this. The world knew him not. He had to be introduced to the world. Now look at this. Let's go to verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. The Bible said the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. You were bought with a price. God owns you. You don't own yourself. This scripture here is saying that Jesus came into his own. The very things that he created, the very beings that he created, and they didn't even receive him because they didn't know him. Right. Ain't that something deep? Yeah. Somebody you created and made, not because you were a fleshly body and they don't understand who you are and what level of power you come from. They looking at you like you look like me. You ain't no different. You the carpenter down the road belong to Mary and Joseph. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Jesus went through so much on this earth. Verse 12 said, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. That's us, y'all. When we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we are now sons. Sons means sons and daughters included. We are the children of God. He give us power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his what? Name. We must believe in the name of Jesus. That's in verse 12. To them that, be that believes on the name of Jesus. We are his children. The sheep of his pasture. Sons and daughters of God. Verse 13 says, which were born not of what? Blood. That's why you must be born again. You cannot be born just in the natural. You have to have a spiritual birth to belong to the family of God, y'all. Right. Verse 13 says, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of who? God. The only way you can get into this family is by accepting Jesus Christ 
as your personal Lord and Savior. Verse 14 said, and the word, we're talking about who? Jesus. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. I mean, we was amongst him. We was in the presence of the glory of God. The glory of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. He was begotten of the Father. The Father is not... Jesus came out from the Father. That's an equivalency there. God is not... Uh, if Jesus begotten of the Father, there's an equivalency there. If God produced something that come out of himself, that's still God. <laughs> Y'all follow what I'm saying? Ain't no big God and little Jesus. No. He came. He was begotten of the Father. He came out of the Father, and there was nothing that was minimal about Jesus coming out of his own Father. There's an equivalency there. People get it twisted. John, in 15, it said, John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. John is testifying. Listen, you might see him in a fleshly body, but this is the Son of God. I am preparing the way for him. He that is coming after me, he's preferred before me because he was there from the beginning of time, y'all. Y'all right. don't need to miss the message. You need to catch the message. Amen. Jesus was there from the beginning. Mm -hmm. The devils knew who he was, y'all. Do y'all believe that? Yes. The devils knew who Jesus was. Even though they seen him wrapped up in a fleshly body, they knew who the Son of God was. They recognize his presence. Just like when you spiritually all messed up and missed your Bible, the devil knows what you've been familiar with. And just to go on a, a little tangent to the left, the young lady I was telling y'all about, I was speaking to, she was saying to me, when you, they kind of connected with these folk. The, she said, well, she said it like this, well, the husband delivered his wife out of witchcraft. I was like, huh? Everything in me, Holy Ghost, was like, you know, the radar was coming up now. I said, you said he delivered his wife from witchcraft? She didn't have an experience with the Holy Spirit where she got delivered from that spirit? Because that's a demon. Yeah, People can't deliver demons unless... The spirit of God on the inside of you allows the authority to cast that demon out. And if you ain't equipped to do that, you ain't casting nothing out. She said, well, they do be going to these stores kind of and going to these candle stores and they be blessing their house with the sage. I said, that's witchcraft. The devil is a lie. They're mingling with familiar spirits. They operate the same like the zodiac signs and the psychics and the spirit of divination. You better be watchful of who you fellowship with. I said, listen, when I was in California, I was around people and I encountered someone who came out of witchcraft and that spirit don't leave so easily. It's like when that house is kept swept clean and that demon cast out he go again and get seven more demons more wicked than himself and come back and possess when people mingle in witchcraft and demonic activity you can't deliver them so easily these things only come out by fasting and prayer and if you don't know how to deliver people your husband ain't delivered her spiritually she called you out of the blue. You haven't heard from her in over so much time. She's dealing with familiar spirits. See, familiar spirits know and have a knowledge, a limited knowledge about your life. And that's why these demons be speaking through these uh, sorcery and witchcraft, these psychics, because these familiars, they're tapping into the spirit realm, but they don't have the Holy Ghost. You better be wise. Do not allow her to speak in your spirit. Don't, don't go to their house. Don't ride in their car. If they give you gifts, throw them in the garbage. Because whatever they possessing got demons attached to 
to them and them demons will come into your house and cause all kind of hell and ruckus to be raised in your house. And you'll be wondering where in the world did this stuff come from? Because you connected with some demon that you're allowing to speak into your spirit and they are mingling with familiar spirits that you're not aware of. Because you're not spiritually equipped to deal with them. But see, I've been around that kind of stuff. You can't play with the devil. You can't play with those kind of spirits. You can't mingle with that stuff. When they talking about they blessing their house with sage and all this stuff, that's witchcraft. That's not from God. And if she can't say specifically that Jesus Christ is Lord, then that spirit have not been delivered out of her. It's just laying dormant and it's fooling everybody to have you think that she's delivered. The devil is a lie. That spirit will calm down and attach to her husband. Now they both going to the candle stores doing this time out. They blessing their house with sage. The devil is slick. Pastor Winfield always say he's crafty. And he is. Yeah. And you ain't smarter than him unless you got the Holy Ghost. Amen. We are mindful of the devil's devices, the Bible says. Only through the Holy Ghost. Listen. She said, I'm glad I mentioned that to you. I'm, like, I'm glad you did. Because that lady is not delivered. She can talk about God. They can mention God. People do that all the time. The worldlies are the worldliest people talk about God. I believe in God. I love God. Well, what God are we talking about that you believe in? You have not named the name of Jesus Christ. This is why it's important in church and in the ministry that we say Jesus Christ is Lord because the Spirit of God only allows you to say that when you, you can only say that when you have the Spirit of God. Let's put it like that. Any other spirit will not acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Son of God. It's coming from some other place. And I kept telling her, I said, she's dealing with familiar spirits. Familiar spirits give you an itching ear and start having you mingle into a certain thing. Nah, that ain't of God. We don't bless our house with spirit. I bless my house with the anointing oil in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ is Lord of this house. That's how I bless my house. I bless my house through prayer and calling on the name of Jesus, a relationship with him. But you're doing all these kind of rituals. You're going to candle stores and burning candles and stuff like that. I'm seeing that spirit in their house. Uh, his daughter is caught up in it. All kind of sage and crap just burning in her. Incense and stuff, all that stuff. That's part of witchcraft, rituals. You be wise not to mingle with that spirit because when you become entangled in that spirit is a stronghold that's hard to be delivered from. Hard to be delivered from witchcraft. Look, verse 16 said, you right, Lisa, stay in prayer. And of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. Thank you, Jesus. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by who? Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Laws was given to Moses. God gave him the Ten Commandments with the finger of God. Shh, shh. Verse 18 said, no man have seen God. If anybody say, I see God all the time, you are lying. The truth ain't in you. Amen. The scriptures say right here, no man have seen God. Y'all remember what I said. It was a story I told y'all that God only allowed the man of God to see his hinder parts so he wouldn't kill him. Your eyes can't look upon the glory of God because if they're sinning you, it's going to burn you up, consume you. No man can look on them. You'll burn me right on top. I'll be a blue pile of ashes. Like, okay, what happened to Deborah? She tried to look at <laughs> God. You can try to look at the sun and get your retina burnt up if you want to, but you can't look upon God. 
No man has seen him at any time. Listen, the only begotten son, which is in the what? Bosom of the father. He have declared him. God have made known to every person on this earth, present, past, future, that the only way you can get to God is you must go through the door. That door is through his son, Jesus Christ. And if you don't receive Jesus Christ, you can't not receive the Father. I don't care how much they talk about, I love God, God love me, God got me. You are lying, the truth ain't in you. The Bible tells us to try the spirit by the spirit. How do you try the spirit by the spirit? You've got to test that spirit. That spirit tells me, oh, I know God, I love God. Well, can you say Jesus Christ is Lord? And I shared this with this young lady. I said, I work with a guy, and he, he was a known alcoholic in the plant. And he talked about, oh, I go to church, or I love God, and this and that. I said, can you say Jesus Christ is Lord? First time I ever experienced this in my life. He kept going around in a different conversation, talking all around the topic, but never saying what I requested him to say. I said, can you say Jesus Christ is Lord? He never said it. And that let me know whatever spirit is operating in you, it ain't from God. If they cannot say that statement, we went through that with Andrea in the room. Didn't we, Steve? So she got something, I don't know, it's something else working in her that's got her pulled up out of here. I don't remember the whole dynamics of the situation. But I kept saying to her, say Jesus Christ is Lord. And when I tell you her mouth went like this, like something took her hand, the hand and she couldn't say it. Didn't you witness it, Amber? She couldn't say Jesus Christ is Lord. That spirit has driven her out of here. She'll sit here and, and, and the spirit, whatever is operating in it, will allow her to sit around and, and listen to the word. But when it comes to speaking Jesus Christ as Lord, this is why I know it's something else operating in you. And my spirit can't connect. I love you, but you didn't allow something else to come and take root in you. It ain't from God. She couldn't say it. You was a witness, Amber was a witness, we all sat in that room, and I looked. That thing, whatever that spirit was, looked like it took and tied her tongue up. And I never seen anything, I knew it was a demon. I began to pray and speak in tongues, but I knew I wasn't spiritually equipped to cast that thing off of her. So y'all keep her in prayer. I'm telling you, something operating in her that is not from God. And every now and then she'll lash out here and there, mostly with this man here, but not me, because you know it's like it's all like popcorn. You ain't coming to me with that. But that happened right in that room. They witnessed it. When I seen it, I said, oh, she got something else working in her. Something else working in her. Let's keep one another in prayer. Listen, my job is as a parent to love my children, as a, a, a minister to minister this gospel, but I can't save people unless they want to be saved. I know I've given you the word. I've given you what you need to be taught and trained in, but when your children become adults, they got their own decisions in mind to make. They got their own. God give us all freedom to choose. They got their own decisions and their own mind to make up. And we can't control them. But that happened. You want to pray us out when you speak? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Got your crispy clothes on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. 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 Keep, keep, out, here, keep out here in prayer because she's operating under a demonic it's a spirit. Different spirit. A demonic spirit. You might always say it. Say but that. that's what she's dealing with. She. She's comfortable with it because she deal with it that word and she's under a spell of the people. She she's following the spirit. Pray. She's following the spirit of the demonic spirit at work. Pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this session that came today, God. We thank you for the word that was taught to us. That you keep cover us today, God, on our journey on today, God. No matter what it is today, God, we thank you and protect us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
First dismissed. Yeah, she, she's, she, she's operating on 